I was almost George Floyd. This is the hardest video I've made uh, since I've uh, created IG Entertainment. Because uh, it's trauma that I haven't dealt with. But I feel like I need to speak on it. I've, I've shared my story with my loved ones, of course, with my friends, with my students. And uh, every single year when I would tell my students my story, uh, they would be attentive. Uh, they were mostly respectful. And I always hope that they would learn from my experience. So, in a time like this, I pretty much feel obligated to not uh, withhold my story. Uh, I feel a need to share my story because there are so many others like me who survived. Who survived. See, we are forgetting uh, many of the people that lost their lives. Uh, Brother George Floyd seems like he, he was the last straw. But it seems like people are still forgetting Breonna Taylor and uh, Brother Ahmad. Shit, we can keep going back. Countless Tamir Rice, Sandra Bland, Sean Bell, Philando Castile, Trayvon Martin. The list goes on and on. We forget those individuals because we we're used to the trauma. And so we're pissed by it and then we move on. But there are a lot of people like me who survived that shit. And uh, we haven't dealt with that trauma either. So I want to take this time to share my story uh, and speak to my people and speak to our allies uh, I'm doing this shit unedited uh, unfiltered so if you're not an ally cut this shit off right now if you're not one of my people cut this shit off right now right now if you don't have a deep disdain for social injustice, cut this shit off right now. If you're more disturbed by me using cuss words and you might feel some type of way about how I'm about to tell my own story and address the bullshit in this country, cut this shit off right now. Matter of fact, uh, unfollow me and block me. Don't motherfucking at me. Don't do that shit. I told you motherfucking ass about that already. Don't add me. It's not gonna turn out well for you. Just unfollow me and block me. Cause it's time out for all the niceties and all that shit. Like I said, I was nearly George Floyd. <clears throat> I was at, uh, if you don't know, I'm a graduate of the University of Southern Mississippi. In about three weeks or so before I graduated, uh, there was a party uh, at one of the local clubs. See, uh, you know, the black fraternities and sororities, they would get local clubs and shit to have parties. See, they didn't have a frat row, a fraternity row or something like that for uh, the black fraternities. You know what I'm saying? So black folks had to go off campus. And uh, I had been grinding out. You know how, you know what senioritis about. And I was hit with that shit. It was it was rough. My senior year was rough academically. And when I say rough, I'm not saying my grades were bad. Uh, I graduated number one in my motherfucking class. Uh, for those of y'all to be goddamn trying to play me weak or something, because I used a few cuss words. Quit playing with me. Uh, or some of y'all trying to at me about uh, my political stances. <laughs> 
Like I ain't got damn teach the shit for a decade. Like stop it. But uh, I was grinding out, man. And I was tired, and uh, so I said, "Fuck it, I'm gonna go out tonight." <laughs> and me and the homies had a great time. Great time. Great time. Great time. I drove. So, uh, and I mentioned that uh, because nobody, I wasn't fucking drunk. Based on what I'm getting ready to fucking tell you, I was not fucking drunk. I think I had like one or two beers or some shit like that. Nothing. And that was early in the night. So we leave the party. We're in the parking lot. And uh, I was playing my music. I had just released a mixtape. And I'm playing the shit. And I was distributing my mixtape. You know what I'm saying? Still like today. You know, uh, I got to be my number one fan and handle all the business. Write the songs, distribute the songs, all that shit. So I'm out there moving. Cop comes up to me, uh, comes up to my vehicle and says, uh, you know, whose car is it? I tell the officer, and I'm quoting myself, it's my car, Mr. Officer, I'm about to move in one second, baby. I say that, and they reach to give my last CD to this person, I don't know if it was a gentleman or a girl, to this person that's right here. That motherfucking officer picked me up. I was not, I'm 220 now. I was not like this. I was a buck 65, I think. That motherfucker picked me up and slammed me on my vehicle and said to me, I ain't your motherfucking baby. I pushed the officer off me. I said, what the fuck is wrong with you? When I did that, he started hitting me in my face. Now, how I was raised and how my nature is. First of all, I was raised that if a motherfucker put their hand on you, if you don't want their ass, I'm gonna whoop your ass. That's what my mama taught me. And then just my nature is if somebody tries to harm me, I respond back in kind. That's who I am. And you have that right. If a motherfucker, if a policeman is making a uh, unlawful arrest and using excessive force, you ain't gotta just let that motherfucker kill you. You got the right to defend yourself. Now, <clears throat> to be honest, I didn't know that at that moment. I was just reacting. Cause like I told my students, I wish I wasn't like this. I wish I had just lied there. Like Ezel on Friday and said my neck, my back, and all that bullshit and sued the shit out of Hattiesburg, Mississippi. But I did. I defended myself. When this officer slammed me on my fucking vehicle because he didn't like that I was uh, not giving him enough deference, I suppose, by me saying, it's my car, Mr. Officer, I'm about to move it in one second, baby. So he slammed me on my fucking vehicle. And when I got him off me, he started hitting me in my face. So when I returned, fire, uh, he and his fellow officers uh, apprehended me and they were partners. I'm, Fight. My partners tell me about four or five of these motherfuckers on me. And they hit me with clubs and shit. One of my homies, he got choked. Another homie got pushed to the ground. I think they might have broke his cell phone. They slammed me on the ground. Another homie, uh, Rob Patty, risked his freedom 
and his life to get one of them off of him. When they got me down, they maced me. And uh, had cat had his knee in my back, and they handcuffed me. And I'm telling the dude I can't breathe. <clears throat> See, that's why they. I couldn't watch the George Floyd video. I know y'all telling me that it was damn near nine minutes. I couldn't watch this shit. Couldn't watch. Couldn't watch. I couldn't watch the other brother that got choked out. They said he can't breathe. I couldn't watch that. I said the old word. Told him I can't breathe, and uh, I can hear the crowd. Like this is a big ass party. It's damn near like an end of the year party. A lot of motherfuckers out here. I hear the crowd tell him, "Can't you, can't you hear that man saying he can't breathe?" And all I can hear is the officer on my back saying, "Oh, he can breathe. He can breathe." Kind of like that mayor. Here in Mississippi. I got metal rods and screws in my back. I have scoliosis. I had surgery uh, to correct it while I was in college. So not too far before this incident, I had this surgery. But there I was. Handcuffed, maced, this big ass motherfucker knee in my back, taking my breath. I'm lucky. I'm lucky as a motherfucker. Not only because of that, but also because they, they drug me up, took me to the patrol car. I can't see anything. I don't know what they're doing with me. I don't know where they're, where they're taking me. They put me in this way. And I did, you know, I, I got myself like this to turn around. And so I can try to look out the window and see where the fuck they're taking me. I don't know what the fuck I would have done. I'm handcuffed. And I'm amazed I can't see shit anyway, but I'm trying to blink and see. I'm lucky. They take me to uh, to jail. I wash my eyes out in the uh, sink. Not sink, excuse me. In a water fountain. <laughs> and then a black officer, or whoever the fuck this is, at intake. Looks at my driver's license and saw that I wasn't from Hattiesburg. And she says, uh, hmm, what you doing there? I said, I go to Southern Miss. I'm about to graduate in three weeks. And she says to me, black woman now. She says to me, that's what they teach out at their school to hit the police. And I told her I was defending myself because he hit me first. She didn't give a fuck. Young black male versus white cop, Mississippi. Forest County, Mississippi. County named after one of the founders of the KKK. So you would think, okay, I know what I'm facing there. I've studied this shit. I got great grades in all of my history classes. This is what I do. I know that shit. But then for that, for that black lady to say that shit to me, that shit hurt. 
They took me to a room, I guess this interrogation shit. Talking to a sergeant, a black sergeant. He asked me, am I in a gang? I told him, yeah, the get money gang. I'm about to graduate from college. I'm trying to get this money and take care of my family. He has me write a statement. I wrote it. <sighs> and I basically remember the gist of it was that I, I'm a citizen. You know who wants my rights respected. In that room, that officer, that sergeant, admitted to me that the officer who assaulted me was an overly aggressive officer. He admitted that to me. In that room. That's a very important point for later on. I get taken in. I had to strip. Try to keep my drawers on. Cuz said all of it. So I had to strip butt ass naked in front of this man. That's emasculating. Countless people go through it. They didn't have a bed for me, so I had to sleep on the fucking floor. When they took my mug shot and got my fingerprints and shit. White lady in there uh, asked what happened. I told her. She told me. The police like your mom and dad. My mom never hit me for no fucking reason. Me being too lax with that motherfucker was not a reason for him to assault me. I don't want him to do no shit to me like that. Luckily, I got good homies. My homies didn't call my mom. They know my mom would have lost her damn mind. My homie, Tim G. Jake, who called my, my girlfriend, who's not my wife, told her what happened. My homie, Joe Forbes and uh, Byron McGloucester, they got my car and uh, they went around and hustled with the other homies and put together money and went and got the bail money and they bailed me out the next day. Real motherfuckers, I love them boy. I got lucky. Ten thousand dollar boom. Now you gotta pay ten percent of it. My boys went to care. When I got out, I went to my uh, professor house. My mentor, Dr. Curtis Austin. He's written about the Black Panther Party for self-defense. He was one of the few black professors I had at Southern Miss. Uh, he's somebody I revere. So I went to his home, told him what happened. He was so fucking mad. Because he cared about it. And he hated police. He hates police brutality. And he set me up with one of his homies for my lawyer. And I don't hold that against Doc, but that lawyer turned out to be a piece of shit.
Because in my trial, I had like, well, first of all, uh, when I first showed up for trial, oh, oh let me fucking back up. Let me give y'all the whole story. Initially, they were trying to charge me with felony assault on a motherfucking police officer and send me to prison. Once I told the sergeant who I was, I, I had never been arrested. I have never been arrested since. Uh, stellar grade, like I said, graduating number one in my motherfucking class. Hell, I ain't never been suspended from school. So when I give him all this, he agrees to uh, drop the charge to a misdemeanor. But in between me getting out and me going to trial, I filed a complaint against this motherfucker. I typed that shit up. Uh, when I got out, shit, I was sore as a motherfucker. Now you know you fight. Uh, especially you fighting for your fucking life. You don't feel nothing adrenaline pump. But all this shit was sore than a motherfucker. And I had a few scrapes and shit up here. So I went to the hospital to get checked out and shit. But also to have that shit for documentation. So I put all that uh, with the complaint. I had this shit typed up like a motherfucker. Went to internal affairs at HPD. Hattiesburg Police Department. That shit got back to the old folk. And so my lawyer tells me they're trying to take the deal off the table where they're going to drop it from a felony to a misdemeanor if I file the complaint. Now, you told me that this is an overly aggressive officer. I'm sure that's not the first, that wouldn't have been the first time this motherfucker got a complaint on his ass. He doesn't need to be on the force and you know it. But since I'm about to file a complaint on him, They trying to bag out the deal. So now I'm faced with like, damn. If I keep the complaint, I'm gonna be facing a felony that could go to prison if I lose. Young black man versus the white cop before it's kind of Mississippi. So my lawyer advised me to back off of the complaint. And unfortunately I did. I say unfortunately because I feel like, man, that cop probably done that shit to other motherfuckers down there. And not, he not been held accountable. Now I'm moving to my trial. First time I show up for trial, the cop don't even show up. I got a black judge this time. So since it's a misdemeanor now, this is in regular court. If this ain't in your big court. So I got a black judge. We walk in and see they were okay. We might have a chance in there. Maybe the black judge will be sympathetic. They should know about uh, the plight of the black man when it comes to police. Cop don't show up. They tell me we got to reschedule. Now, they have been sending me documents telling me that if I didn't show up for goddamn trial, that they're going to issue a warrant for my arrest. But when the cop don't show up, they reschedule shit. And I be damned. By the time I had my trial, I had a white judge. <laughs> and the officer got in that bitch. And for his testimony, he read straight off of his statement, which was nothing but bullshit. This motherfucker said that when he approached me about the vehicle, that I did this to him. <laughs> now, again, I told you, I'm 165 pounds at the time. I told you I've never been arrested for anything in my life up to that point and since. I told you I've never been suspended from school. I'm about to graduate from Southern Miss in three weeks at the top of my class. And this motherfucking cop 
who big as shit with a damn club and a gun that this motherfucker gets in court and says I did that to him like I was about to strike him and because I did that he grabbed my arm to apprehend me and to place me on my vehicle and then when he did that my arm broke free and I struck him in his face and then when he did that you know he started reading off all this textbook shit that they supposed to do total bullshit but see that goes back to something I heard a black man say when I was in the barbershop one time. He was talking about, uh, they were talking about teachers. I guess some teacher had done some dumb shit. And this cop was saying in the barbershop that if that was his daughter, and that teacher had done something to his daughter, he'll go up to that school and fuck them up. And whatever I do to him, it might not be legal when I do it. But when I write up my report and I turn it in to my superior, oh, it's going to be legal. I was a black cop saying that he would do the same shit that this motherfucker did to me. Lie. Put some bullshit in a report to cover the illegal shit that you do. And that's what the system allows these motherfuckers to do. Because that punk bitch got up in there and fucking lied on me. And that fucking judge, when it was time for me to goddamn testify, the motherfucker go ask my lawyer, can you fill out some paperwork? This motherfucker was in here signing documents while I was speaking. I had like seven or eight witnesses. He ain't fucking listening to them. I even had this white girl who took class with me. I'm in class, she turns around and says, oh, you're the guy from the other night. And I'm like, oh, you were there. You know, a lot of white folks like to come to the black club. Kick it with So I asked her, I said, will you, will you come testify for me? She saw what happened. She saw what bullshit. And this sister was a real one. And she did show up and testify for me. And the judge told her, I don't think you could see from your vantage point or whatever the fuck. I remember the prosecutor. This is what the trial came down to. Me versus the prosecutor. The prosecutor asking me, did you hit him? I said, yes, after he hit me. Did you hit him? Yes, after he hit me. Did you hit him? Yes, after he hit me. Finally, they make me just finally say just yes. Case closed. the bullshit we talking about. This is fucking injustice. There was a camera crew there from Canada. They were doing a documentary on, I think, racism in America or in Mississippi, something like that. They interviewed me after the shit outside the little courthouse. I'm somewhere on some DVD or whatever the hell they got talking about it. Yeah, it's just bullshit. Because that motherfucker thought, well, he maybe didn't think. He was trying to save his own ass. He didn't give a fuck. He didn't give a fuck. Hell, the judge didn't give a fuck. The judge wanted more. The judge didn't want to be charged with no misdemeanor. That motherfucker wanted that shit to be an indictment on goddamn uh, felony assault on police officer. He didn't want me to just be convicted of a misdemeanor. I ended up paying a fine. So they could have possibly ruined my life. Because even though I graduated number one in my class with a BA in psychology, when I went out and tried to apply for jobs in my field, nobody would hire me. You see, I was up front. I would tell people what happened. I didn't want them to do a background check and then go find shit. No, I'm going to tell you exactly what happened. 
And I was hope, hoping they would use common sense to see the truth. That ain't what happened. That cop could have ruined my fucking life. But luckily, a queen by the name of Felicia Jackson, she gave me a chance. I was dead, bro. I ain't gotten married, but I was dead, bro. My wife and I were living with my mom. I was dead, bro. But Queen Felicia Jackson gave me a chance. And that chance turned into me spending a decade as a teacher and coach. That chance turned into uh, me being a three-time teacher of the year. That chance turned into state, regional, and district championships. That chance turned into me being a mentor that chance turned into me being an administrative intern. That chance turned into me being an uh, independent educational consultant. See, I'm telling you all this shit because <laughs> when people have these interactions with police, motherfuckers want to go dig up all this shit from their life and act like you did something to make these motherfuckers uh, be violent against you. Like in Mr. Floyd's case, they want to bring up the fact uh, that he might have had COVID-19. What the fuck they got to do with that motherfucker being on his neck? What the fuck they got to do with anything? Oh, oh and uh, I remember when uh, brother Trey Von Martin was killed. They want to go dig up that he was suspended for school. What the fuck that got to do with George Zimmerman punk ass following him around his own fucking neighborhood? So I just told y'all all the shit that I accomplished in my career to show you that goddamn it, if I was good enough to do all that shit, it wasn't nothing wrong with me. When I was in that classroom and leading those children and instructing those children and winning these awards and uh, uh, school district want to goddamn want me to be a fucking principal there. And don't judge me by how I'm speaking right now. I can speak the Queen's English better than your motherfucking ass. I'm just being frank right now. I told you fuck all the niceties. If I'm nice enough to be considered somebody worthy of being an administrator, if I was nice enough to achieve such high marks in college. With no dirt on me. With no reason. No underlying issues. No history of DUIs. No history of alcoholism. No blood alcohol test to say I was under influence and that led me to strike the cop. No scent of marijuana to say that would lead me to strike the cop. No, none of that bullshit that they try to use against us. Out the sergeant's own mouth, that motherfucker was too aggressive. And he got away with it. So I'm sharing my story because so many people are like me. Like I said, the other people who have died, other people that have survived, like this shit so hard. Like I don't even like thinking about this shit like this. Like when I play with my daughter, uh, and she might want to like play, uh, she might want to be like, act like she's a policeman and I'm the criminal or something. You know what I'm saying? I'm playing with him doing stuff. 
we might play like that, but I can't even let her put my hands behind my back. Because it's traumatic. I said, baby, I can't do that. Baby, I can't do that. That shit doesn't leave your mind, man. That shit doesn't leave your fucking mind. So for all those who have died, for all those who have survived police violence, for all those who've been uh, uh, falsely convicted, like I was, for all those who've been falsely convicted and incarcerated, like Central Park Five, it's countless people like that. See, they, they, them making that into a movie touched people because it was cinematic. But it's countless people like that. I can't watch shit like that. I haven't watched it. I'm sure it's great cinema. But I can't watch shit like that. Because I carry that shit around me all the time, man. Lives have been ruined by this fucking uh, discriminatory system. My life could have been ruined by this shit. But instead, I had a chance to encounter some amazing young people. Jamel Brooks. I'm proud of that young man. He's organizing right now. Dylan Smith. I'm proud of that young man. He strategized. Ariel J, a great artist, using her platform, using her voice to give voice to the pain of all those who are suffering, not only in the black community, but in the LGBT community. I'm proud of that sister. My youngers are making me proud all the way fucking around. Damn near all of them speaking out on this shit. Damn near all of them speaking out on this shit. They going hard as a motherfucker. And I'm so proud of y'all.